Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again with the follow-up video for our probably strongest build for the league. Maybe, I don't know if you call it build of the league, but by God was this thing a surprise. Uh, the Doriani prototype um, chest is actually just really strong with uh, not that many downsides in the end. The character here is the Assassin Mjolnir with two arcs in uh, both cast on crit and on the Mjolnir setup. And it's done all content rather smoothly. It's got really nice DPS, a really good playstyle with the obvious Cyclone cast on crit sort of bullshit. And uh, you really don't feel the Doriana's prototype um, at all unless you aren't wearing an amulet. Uh, and in plenty of the cases, uh, I haven't been doing that. So as I mentioned in the last video, we are using Divine Flesh to convert half of our Ellie damage taken to Chaos, and then you get a lot of Chaos res. And then you use a um, tier 2 talisman that converts 50% of your lightning into cold or fire. And currently I have one that does cold, but I don't even wear it that often. Um, if I'm not wearing it, then I take a shitload more lightning damage, but that doesn't seem to be an issue in plenty of situations. And I instead wear just a really big crit multi amulet, since that's what my talismans have been making me. But I've tried to make a better cold one, and uh, just haven't. So in the end, I've just been running a shitty one whenever I need to, like for example, this Hall of Grandmaster type bullshit, um, Eradicator, Baron, Cirrus, whatever you want, you wear a proper amulet that helps you reduce damage. Now, the point of this clip here is to show you that this shit actually just messes Hall of Grandmasters up hard. I did maybe like 20 of these maps now after doing one and realizing, hey, this is actually a really strong build for it. So I ended up farming about 20 of these guys. Uh, I think I failed a couple because um, I didn't have a block reduction gem yet, and the last few dudes. Um, can be pretty damn potent. So Hall of Grandmasters, if you're unaware, is a map where people could have submitted their characters um, after paying a bunch of money for a supporter pack, and some people have made some really asshole characters and they've got some seriously strong things happening there just to try and screw you over. And this last wing opposite the side I'm about to go, so the top left one, is... Uh, has the strongest dudes at the very end and it's kind of just a RNG fiesta as to who you get. If you get a few of the absolute worst guys all together, it can be really bad and you can um, waste a few deaths trying to kill them if you don't like get some good procs or you know attack them the right way that you really um, would like to to begin with. So some of these runs are deathless, some of these runs have like one death, some of these runs you get kind of just like hard stuck because uh, a few really bad things like line up all at once and in this particular run you'll see that I get like three of the absolute worst dudes uh, at least for my character anyway all together and I do end up dying um, and I have to go back in and kind of reassess the situation and all that so this lightning wob dude that I just then killed is one of the absolute worst and he was just shitting on me that scorching ray dude to the right is one of the absolute worst and then the lightning strike Freddy Krueger type dude is also one of the absolute worst. So if you get all of them together, uh, it can become quite a mess. Uh, one at a time with a block reduction gem on this character isn't all that bad. As long as we're wearing our amulet and, you know, have all of our lightning converted, then it's fine. But, yeah, it can be a bit of a mess and I just, I can't ever promise that you'll be doing these things 100% clean all of the time. It's just, here's, here's another example of the last fight, the last wave. Got a few better procs and a few better characters and overall didn't die. So it is uh, just a bit of a RNG fiesta as to which asshole is going to try and block you. Uh, before you finish the run. But overall, yeah, each each of those runs is like two minutes and we were just shitting on Hall of Grandmasters, which is something I've never actually experienced on another character before. Plenty have done okay, plenty have done just, you know, adequate or barely got there or died a bunch of times but uh this one was farming and you can see we just did a simulacrum there it was pretty damn smooth for all of simulacrum this is an example of a t16 100 delirium uh kind of just butted through most of it it was 
pretty tough though because uh, cycling forces you to be very melee with all these dudes and it's not exactly something you want to do but uh, we got through it, even killed the Phoenix with a few deaths though. Uh, but yep, 100% T16 Delirium down. And then just a bunch of the rest of the content uh, with a bit of a DPS showcase for the build. It will be a tougher build to make um, without pure harvest crafting because... Uh, I think most of the um, benefit from the harvest crafting was filling out my resists a bit easier and then also the jewels for my uh, build. I could make some pretty nutty crit multi jewels that weren't hard to make but are very hard to um, get in different leagues or in other leagues I mean because uh, those types of jewels are pretty expensive normally whereas here you can make them fairly easily yourself. So. You won't hit the same sort of damage numbers if you're going to try this without a harvest uh, league, but you certainly can incorporate Doriani's prototype into plenty of builds, I think, that um, might be worthwhile doing. Of course, no explosion chest does feel kind of bad, and I do have an example of the Eradicator fight here as well, that um, I'm wearing my conversion amulet on, and it doesn't really pose much of a problem at that point. Um, I am enfeebled most of the time and I'm just showing you that you can still take lightning damage and it's no big deal. Likewise with um, the barren squares when you've got the influence up those aren't a problem in the maps either. I thought they'd be absolutely terrifying and get me killed as everyone was telling me they would but no you got a few seconds you can stand there and take some degen and for the most part you can just run through them without taking any damage anyway. So there isn't really any super big problem wearing this chest if you've built it correctly around it. I'll leave you guys with the Cirrus Awaken 8 just because, I don't know, it was kind of an interesting fight, I guess, with this setup. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. So I guess I'll wear proper amulet this time around to maybe be tankier. Because I did that yesterday and I was scared entire time. <laughs> Hopefully this means I can just take way more hits. Deeps should still be adequate enough. Not great when I'm not pressing flasks. But it shouldn't even be that bad. I mean, my crit rate... Actually, it's, it's the cyclone crit rate that sucks, right? That's why I need the diamond flask. So yeah, it still won't be great. Decent deep, so. The one thing we're very scared of is the vortexes. Because that's just like going to be lightning damage over time. Which I think does a lot of damage. Not man enough to find out. I kind of want to find out. Maybe I should find out. I have to find out, right? What is life if not a science experiment? It's not that bad. I was on the very outer edge there. Hm. It's not that bad. I thought it'd be like really bad. Okay. Not gonna blow my load yet. I didn't have power charges up. 
Actually, maybe now it's fine. It was good damage. Didn't get enough DPS time in there. Another shitty Jew. Damn shitty thing. Unless that's good. I think that one might actually be good. An Awakened Brutality. Brutality might be worth something. So not the worst result. Yeah, minus 10. That's gross. Minus 20s will get out. Never lucky, dude. Awakened Brutality. Two exalts. Yeah, that's not bad. 